Well, let's let's get into the Tet Offensive mm -hmm. and uh, the picture you made. Could could you just kind of take us at the start of the day and walk us through that day? Yeah. Uh, I can only pick you up about the. Uh, let's see. Uh, all right, I'll give you a little bit of background. The Associated Press office was in an old German embassy building or whatever it used to be. Uh, next to the Associated Press office was an NBC office. So NBC and AP kind of, we didn't really share the offices. We had our own, but we were right next door to each other. Now, in other words, for NBC to get on the news, like if the NBC correspondent would go out on the story, this is just a little background, uh, there's a chance he may or may not get any airtime in New York or worldwide. But if the Associated Press ran a couple of paragraphs saying about a certain event, he got like a 99% chance of getting on the air. And so they would use us, which is fine, because uh, we used to have this saying, like, we would tip each other off a lot because uh, NBC was no competition to us. We were a wire service, you know, and we would tip them off if we would hear about something and they would send the crew or vice versa. And we did a lot of this back and forth. Hey, we got something you want to ride, you know, and all this. This was a normal routine. And uh, actually one day that uh, this is exactly what happened. Uh, it was uh, actually Howard Tuckner, uh, who used to be with uh, NBC. And Tuckner poked his head in and says, hey, he says, there's a little battle taking place in Chowan. Does anybody want to come along? I said, sure, I'll go. You know, it was a slow day. So we got in the car and we went to Cholon. And Cholon is a Chinese section of Saigon. And uh, we got within a couple of blocks of the area. And uh, it was very quiet. There wasn't any, there's no movement. When there's no movement, no people, you know that something is up. And so we parked the car and we walked a couple more blocks up and took a turn. And then we can see a lot of sniping, snipers going on. And what it was, it was a mini battle of uh, South Vietnamese soldiers, police, and uh, behind a pagoda called the An Quang Pagoda. And there was some uh, Viet Cong, there was only a handful of Viet Cong in this, behind the walls of this pagoda, and they were shooting each other. So we went there and it was like really nothing. It was like a nothing story. So we went there and we spent about 15 minutes, and Tuckner and uh, Vo Su was the uh, NBC cameraman. It was Tuckner and Vosu. They said, let's head back, you know. I said, fine, so I was ready to go back. We really didn't have anything. So we started back, and we got maybe 25 yards up from, 30 yards up from the pagoda, and we seen them pulling this guy out of a building. He was on the ground floor then, and they were, like, taking him by the hand, and they pulled him out on the street. Now, to backtrack, like, any photographer, say, news photographer, when you grab a prisoner in New York or something, you just follow him. I mean, it's a picture. You know, you follow him until he's loaded into a wagon and driven away, until he's, you can visually see him. So that's exactly what we did. It was the NBC crew and myself. And I think that might have been a military, I don't really know. But we seen him grab this guy, and we started walking him down the street. And they just kept walking up maybe about uh, 100 yards to the corner. And had a sequence of pictures, just walking, I don't know who this guy is. And they stopped for a minute, and to my left, I was about five feet away from the prisoner. <coughs> and to my left came this guy, I had no idea. And I had a 35 millimeter lens and a single frame camera. And uh, he went over and I seen him go for his pistol. Well, when somebody goes for their pistol, they normally threaten. But I've taken pictures like that, somebody threatening somebody, you know, do this or I'm gonna shoot you, and nothing ever happens. So I seen him go for his pistol. As soon as he raised his pistol, I took one frame, and that was the instant that he shot him. And I didn't, I had no idea that he was going to do this. And the interesting thing is that the, this picture, and I don't know if you recall, at the time, <coughs> they asked for it in, uh, I think in Pennsylvania. The, the U.S. Army asked for the picture, and they wanted all the details of the camera, the model of the camera, the shutter speed the picture was taken. I don't know if you ever knew this, Hal. Mm. Yeah, they wanted to know the shutter speed. Uh, they found out the pistol that the bullet was shot from. And uh, according to the U.S. Army, they said the bullet was still in his head when the picture was taken. 
I mean, I had, I didn't even know I got him shooting him. Anyway, this was interesting. So it hadn't let, left his head according to all their whatever. And uh, so I, I took the picture. Uh, I seen him fall to the ground and I turned my head because I didn't want to shoot what I seen. And I had seen uh, maybe three or four foot spot of blood just shoot up like a water fountain. And I didn't want to shoot that. I thought there was no reason. I waited and I said, somebody's tell me when it's done. And then I turned, I took up more frames of just the body laying there. And right after this happened, uh, we found, uh, he was a colonel then. Uh, we didn't know who he was. So this guy comes walking, he puts his pistol in his holster and came walking right by, <coughs> like I'm saying, I'm from Buddy, meet five feet away. And he said they killed many of my men and many of your people and just kept walking and that's all he said and uh, we found out later that he was the national chief of police for South Vietnam and much later on he was promoted to one-star general and it's General Winnock Luan who by the way is presently dying of cancer um, uh, the other thing, I'll, I'll just add on this. What happened is after the picture was taken, uh, we got message word from New York what was happening in the States with the picture, you know, about the demonstrations and everything. And everybody wanted to know, uh, uh, who is this guy? You know, we need a story on him. And I volunteered to do the story, and everybody in the AP office said, no, we'll get somebody else. And I said, no, I want to do it. And they finally said, okay. So every day for the next two weeks, I went knocking on his door in his office to see him. And everybody said, don't, you know, I was, I wanted to get this story. So finally, after two weeks, this colonel brings me in and it brings me into the general. And the interesting thing is, I don't know if you ever heard this one anyway, what he did is, uh, the general is sitting back there where you are, and he got up on his desk, and he came over to me. And I said, I never, never mentioned the photograph to him once. I said, I'd just like to follow you around for about a week or a few days and see what you do to do a story. And he got up on his desk and he stuck his head right next to mine. Wait a minute, no, no, it was right this way, that right eye to eye. And he almost touched noses. And he said, uh, I know the Vietnamese who took that photograph. And then he went back to his desk and sat down. And I could never understand what he uh, meant by that until later which I did find out. He wasn't blaming me for the picture. Uh, this is something he explained a little bit later, that if anybody, he, he'd always said that if I wasn't there, somebody else would have done it. So he said, you were doing, he actually, he actually told me you were doing your job and he was doing his. And when he was sitting there, after he did this, I, you know, he scared the hell out of me. You know, it was nose to nose and he's looking me right in the eye. And then he sat down and he says, you know, he says, after the picture was taken, after it appeared, his wife yelled at him. And he said that his wife gave him hell for not taking the film from the photographer. And he said, she thinks that's all I have to worry about is taking film from photographers. She had no idea. So. Yeah. I never heard that part of yeah. the story. What <coughs> what was the reaction in Vietnam to the picture? Nothing. Vietnam, nothing. See, that's the part, even with me. In fact, after the picture was taken, I dropped the film off, and I think, uh, I don't know if John Nance or who was in the office, I don't remember who was in the office, and I said, I think I have a picture of some guy shooting somebody. This is before I knew what was going to happen, and I went out to lunch. It was lunchtime. But I thought absolutely, and when I took the picture, I absolutely thought this much about it. I said, I think I got this guy shooting somebody. I, I had no idea what we had. When I seen the picture, I wasn't impressed. And I'm still not impressed. Uh, because, you know, again, you can look at it in a lot of different ways. Uh, it was like, it's not a great work of art in terms of photography. Number one, it's the wrong time of day. <laughs> the light wasn't right. I mean, but you don't, <laughs> I'm just a news picture. Uh, you know, composition, it was terrible. Uh, but on the other hand, it was a moment that was, I guess, very important. And I still don't believe, you know, I, I still don't understand to this day why it was so important. Because I've heard so many different versions of what this picture did, like it helped end the war in Vietnam. 
uh, I don't understand it. I mean, I really don't understand a lot of it. How long was it after you made the picture that you came back to the States? Uh, on that trip? I'm trying to think that would have been in 68. Probably several months. Maybe but six months. the picture months. did turn up in a lot of the demonstrations. Oh, it was in, it was in on all of the, yeah, and the, until today, you know, they still talk about this. What kind of feedback did you get from New York at the time? Only that the, the, the kind of play and what was happening and what was happening in the States, yeah, we, we kept getting messages. Did you know there was another picture made that day of a Vietnamese soldier carrying a dead child out of a hut that had been attacked by the Viet Cong? No and that those pictures were played in a lot of places side by side. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, yeah. I, in fact, I used to have a whole collection of uh -huh. slides of tear sheets, and they got away from me. And I, I'm sorry, because huh. it was a great example of balance. That's right, and, right, you know, exactly. Both sides of the war. And uh, I remember distinctly one of the British papers had your picture on top and the other one down the side in a big headline, Savage City. The way the Brits right here. But also, you know, the interesting thing is, uh, I, I don't I know if you remember, but that is the only time that the New York Times, up until that time, I don't know if you recall this, used the same picture on the front page and inside. That's right. I remember that being a, a, an twice. item that, uh, right. which I thought was interesting. Yeah, yeah, so what? I mean, but I mean, just saying it, it was is just interesting. interesting well, right, thing. Yeah. Eddie. We have a couple minutes left on the tape. Do you want to change yeah, change it. Yeah, it's a good time. Good chance. That was a very. You've often said you don't really like to talk about the picture that much. Mm -hmm. I and, don't. And I appreciate I the detail don't. and the candor of this, but why? why? Well, you know, like I've said, I've said it several times, too, that, that I think two people's lives were destroyed that day. Uh, the general's life was destroyed as well. And I don't want to destroy anybody's life. That's not my job, you know. I mean, it really isn't. I mean, I don't. You know, I mean, he's been condemned. Uh, uh, one thing is, which is interesting, is what really bothered me when uh, Vietnam was going down the tubes, that the United States would not fly the general out of Vietnam. They said, just, you know, well, we don't even own you. We have nothing to do with you. You know, whose war was it really? He was killing our so-called bad guys, you know. And they kind of disowned them. And, uh, he eventually flew out with the Vietnamese Air Force into, I think it was into Guam, and had a, another friend of his, a counterpart in the CIA, help finance a, the rest of the trip to him, bring him to the States, which he eventually opened up a pizza shop. Um, he had a remarkable background, didn't he? Yes, he was uh, first in his class in the French Air Force Academy. He went there. He went to U.S. Command and Staff College. I think he was first there. Uh, his, his sister was a professor at Harvard in pharma, pharmacology. I don't even know if she's still there. I've never met her. His one brother is in medicine. They all actually basically studied medicine, the whole family. Uh, I mean, the guy's not uh, an idiot. He's a very smart man and very intelligent man and very well loved in Vietnam, no matter what contrary. See, so pictures do lie. I mean, let's go to that for a minute. You know, pictures don't tell the whole story. You're looking, when you look at a photograph, you're looking at one five hundredth of a second or one hundred two fiftieth of a second. And it's a moment. Sure, he shot him, but it doesn't tell you why. It doesn't tell you, it doesn't tell you much. It didn't tell you that it was America's war, not the Vietnamese war. <coughs> you know, so you, <coughs> you don't see all, all sides of it. Uh, pictures are very important because people believe photographs. And uh, can I elaborate on this a little bit? Absolutely. Uh, what happens is with a photograph, look, you could have the, you could have Norman Mailer, uh, David Halberstam, write the greatest story in the world, and it could be all factual, right down to the, every word, and somebody, you, the public, will look at it and read the story, and there'll be that little bit of doubt yet if that really did happen, you know, and you'll say, well, yeah, maybe, yeah, well, you know, still, I'm not really sure. But if there's a photograph right with that story, that's the eyewitness. So it actually did, that'll confirm a person's belief in the story. 
uh, and the picture could be a lie. But that person, like we will, we'll look at that and it's real, it becomes real, it becomes a real thing. So pictures are a lot more important than a lot of people, you know, they say the written word, bullshit. The picture is what does it. It's the same thing, let me, can I backtrack one more time here, is that uh, it's the same thing when we did the uh, boat people escaping from Vietnam um, in 77, I don't know, when Carter was president. Um, America was, uh, I was on, uh, very briefly, I'll just say, I was on this boat escaping I, from I Vietnam. I want to come back to the boat people, it's not my Oh, place. okay, then I, I won't go back, I won't yeah. go there right now. But anyway, I was just trying to put this confirmation of a photograph. Um, why do you suppose, as in so often is the case, that the very few people remember that, that picture, that scene was filmed that you photographed? The what? The film, there was a film of the... Oh yeah, the NBC, yeah. yeah but it, I mean, you see it now and again, but it doesn't have the memory, the lasting value that, why, why is well, it in your mind? Well, because I think that, look, that's why I'm a still photographer and not a film photographer. I'm very greedy and very selfish because what happens is, on a film, you could do the greatest film in the world, and once it's shown, it's going on the shelf. And then sometime later on, somebody will take it down from the shelf and show it again. And maybe later on, somebody will show it again, but it's always on the shelf. Uh, my pictures are going to be in history books. They will keep appearing. A person can sit there and study it. It'll be on the front page. It'll be on the cover of a magazine. And they'll look at it. And they'll save it. And there's that instant that'll embed in somebody's mind. Uh, the film will show, and it's gone. And it could be a very good film. And you'll remember, you know, some parts of it, but it won't be the same. Well, I mean, there's a lasting power with with still photos. Have Jima a lasting. Picture. What, Iwo Jima, there, were, there was film made of that, Nick there was film, picture, Nick yeah. Woods picture, it's yeah. almost every major event, you know, there, there was always film, and it's good film. Yeah. Um, you never felt threatened in Vietnam after the picture was made, personally? No. Um, one person, there was one reaction, uh, I think from competition, I'm not sure. I really, I'm really not sure, but <coughs> somebody said, well, there are a lot of executions, but I mean, what was so different? No, I'm sure that? maybe there was, but there weren't any photographers there. Yeah, I never saw a photograph. <laughs> yeah, never saw a photograph. Well, <laughs> apparently they said other photographers had made pictures, but I never saw them. I have never seen one either. You know, I did like about 150 operations over there. <laughs> but I'm saying that's okay. But I mean, but I'm saying I'm sure there, there was, but... Yeah, I, I I saw mean, if there was, we'd see a picture at one point if there was a photographer there. Um, let's go back to the boat people now. It's a whole.